Welcome back to Showdown. Well, our next guest is the Shadow Justice Minister, Michael Keenan, Shadow Justice Minister, who wants to tow boats out to sea. He wants to open Nauru, and he'd also like to create a situation where temporary protection visas come back into play. Now, I've never made any secret of my disdain for the Coalition's policy on asylum seekers. We're joined by the Shadow Minister now. Mr Keenan, thanks for your company. Good to be with you, Peter. Let's go straight to this issue of towing boats back out to sea. How can you claim to be concerned about the humanitarian implications of the so-called Malaysian solution when you're prepared to do something like that? Well, it's not towing boats out to sea. It's towing boats back to where they've came from, um, which is one of the key planks that the Howard government used to break the back of the people smugglers um, when they were faced with similar problem when they were in government. Well, presumably you've got to pull them out to sea before you can take them back to where they've come from, though. Well, essentially it's turning them around and sending them back to the ports from which they've departed, um, which sends a very strong message to people smugglers that Australia is very serious about stopping them um, from being in charge over bringing people down to Australia illegally. Um, we did it about seven times when we were in government and nothing could send a stronger message to people smugglers that you're deadly serious about closing our borders for their evil trade. OK, well, let's come at it another way then. One of the criticisms you've got with the Malaysian solution is that they're not signatories to the relevant UN conventions. If you're going to take boats back to where they came from in the case of Indonesia, which is, of course, the country most likely for that to be the case, they are also not a signatory to the various UN conventions. How do you respond to that? Well, the two things are very different. I mean, turning the boats back around is not offshore processing. Um, when we talk about uh, and when the government talks about sending people to Malaysia, they're talking about how they're going to deal um, with people who arrive here illegally by processing them offshore. I mean, they're two very different things. So to make the comparison, I don't think is reasonable. Um, we won't send people to Malaysia because um, we don't believe that they have acceptable uh, standards that we would expect uh, if, when, when people are being treated uh, in the same way in Australia. So I mean, the reason we are not keen on this Malaysia option is we don't believe that Malaysia uh, adheres to the standards that we would expect expect if people were detained here in Australia. Um, but towing boats back is not the same thing as offshore processing. They're two very separate things. OK, they're not the same thing, but it's not quite apples and oranges in the sense that Malaysia I agree with you about, no question, it's not appropriate uh, in many ways, but if you're taking boats back to Indonesia as a non-signatory, it might not be offshore processing, but it's worse than that because they're going back into a system where there isn't even any uh, pretense uh, that there is some sort of orderly process like the agreement that's been signed with Malaysia. But as I said, they're not the same thing, and it's different when people have actually arrived on Australian territory about the obligations you have about how you're going to treat them from there on in. Um, when we're talking about sending the boats back to where they've come from, what we're doing is we're talking about turning the boats back around within a very defined period of time. It means that when they leave Indonesia, chances are they'd be back there within about 24 hours. And we do that because that does send the strongest possible message um, that we are serious about stopping people smuggling. And I might say that uh, this is coalition policy now and the government attacks us for that. But it was Labor Party policy to do exactly that prior to the 2007 election. And the current Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, is on record saying that it's a good idea. But of course, once they've come to government, they're just not strong enough to actually implement that Policy. OK, well, something that's not Labor policy is temporary protection visas, TPVs, as they're known for short. Uh, this issue, you talk about when people land on Australian shores that there's a different requirement. TPVs is something that mental health experts for years uh, have said are problematic for individuals. How do you respond to that? You're looking to institute a policy, if you win government, uh, that, frankly, mental health experts, including former Australian of the Year Patrick McGorry, say are a disgrace. Well, we believe that being a refugee is not necessarily a permanent arrangement. Um the conditions within your home country that you are fleeing from can of course change and they can change quite quickly. Um, you look at two of the largest source countries for people coming illegally to Australia um, which is Sri Lanka and Afghanistan uh, and over the past few years conditions within those countries have changed immeasurably. Um, so we're saying that we believe uh, that Australia uh, is, it sh uh, owes people protection when they arrive here uh, if they're legitimately fleeing persecution from their home country. Okay, so let me ask but if those circumstances but, change okay, then it's right that you re return home after that. But do they have to change quickly? You, you say that the circumstances can change quickly. How indefinite would TPVs be in place for? Are we talking six months, six weeks, six years, 60 years? How long? Uh, well, they would be indefinite because the idea that you're a refugee forever is just not right. Um, but can I tell you, the reason that we are pursuing temporary protection visas is because that, again, destroys the people smugglers business model because the product that they are selling is permanent, uh, is permanent entrance into Australia. Um, so when you introduce temporary protection 
protection visas. Uh, you protect people as is appropriate from persecution within their home country for the time that it is required, um, but you don't allow people smugglers to sell permanent residents to Australia uh, as part of the product that they continue okay, to sell I, around the world. I understand all of that, but what does indefinite mean? How long is the longest that someone could sit there languishing, if I could call it that, on a TPV? Uh, well, you will get protection for the amount of time that you require it from the Australian government. Uh, and we don't put a time limit on it. Um, we say that if conditions within your home country change, um, then we believe it's appropriate that you could return home if you're no longer requiring the protection of the Australian okay, government. OK, so for argument's sake, if somebody from... I don't know how this would happen, but if somebody from East Berlin managed to make their way to Australia shortly after World War II, uh, come the end of the Berlin Wall, the breakdown of the Berlin Wall at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, would we be in a position to send them back? Well, we will protect people as long as as long as we are required to do so. Um, so we're not so, so putting, we're not putting that, a time that frame. That sort of example could seriously happen under the coalition's TPV policy. Yeah, well, look, I think it's a rather wild example, but the point is we don't put a time frame on it. And if we were to do so, then it would destroy the whole point of why we uh, believe in temporary protection visas. Um, we believe in temporary protection visas because it undermines the people smugglers' business model, uh, and it also fulfils Australia's obligations to provide. Uh, protection for people okay. who are fleeing persecution. Okay, I understand that, but just last question on this, just to be clear. So in theory at least, the, the, the East Berlin example is a, 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 an unlikely one, but in theory at least, uh, Afghanistan is a better example. Somebody could be on a TPV for a decade, could they have children in this country uh, and still end up being possibly sent back to Afghanistan if a situation there ever improved? Well, Afghanistan is actually an excellent example of why temporary protection visas are important. I mean, the situation in Afghanistan has changed markedly from the Taliban um, through to the government that they now have. Um, and that is a great example of where conditions within Afghanistan have improved uh, and the likelihood of people being persecuted by the current government there is obviously um, substantially less than it was under the Taliban. Um, so that's actually a very good example about why temporary protection visas are important. Uh, and when those circumstances in your home country change and when you no longer require protection as a refugee, and then we believe it's perfectly appropriate that you return home. All right. On a separate issue, you're a former Shadow Industrial Relations spokesperson. Before, dare I say it, uh, Malcolm Turnbull was rolled as leader and Tony Abbott demoted you from the Shadow Ministry, or the Shadow Front Bench, I should say, in terms of Cabinet. Um, you must have some private views on industrial relations. What are they? I mean, let's be honest here. Liberals are supposed to be in favour of reforming the IR space. Tony Abbott has walked away from the idea of individual contracts for the next election. There's got to be some doubt about that amongst members of the coalition. Would you agree? No, what we want is we want to see a modern, flexible industrial relations system that befits a modern, flexible economy such as Australia. Um, so, so surely that includes individual contracts? Uh, well, there's many different ways that you can get the outcome that you require, and uh, individual contracts uh, is only one way. There's lots of other ways you could have flexibility within the system. Um, we have a fair work system that took Australia back decades uh, in terms of uh, our industrial relations system, uh, and we want to have a look at the faults within that system, and we're getting a lot of anecdotal evidence from work and from business uh, about how prescriptive that system is and why it doesn't suit Australia's needs. And what we want is a, prax a practical policy that actually addresses those faults as, as they've been brought up to us. Uh, but there's you, plenty of different ways though, that we can achieve that. When you say there are different ways that you can achieve it, are you basically saying that you think you might be able to do something akin to individual contracts without having to call them that, perhaps within the ambit of the Fair Work Act? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we can look to get flexibilities within the system in many different ways. Uh, and that is the outcome we're looking for. We don't want a one-size-fits-all industrial relations system. Uh, we don't want an industrial relations system that's more like the 1950s um, than befits uh, this decade. Uh, we want an industrial relations system that is actually going to work for Australia. And we're not ideological about it. Um, we just want a system that addresses the practical faults within the fair work structure um, and that we can move to take Australia, that we can use to take Australia forward. All right, Michael Keenan, Shadow Justice Minister, we appreciate you joining us on Showdown. Thanks for your time. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Peter.